Hello? I think everybody's here. Mr. Clerk, are you ready to begin? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, very good. We'll now begin the planning committee meeting of Akron City Council. We'll now begin the planning committee meeting of Akron City Council. We have um, three items that are up for public hearing. Uh, the procedure for this is that um, we will swear in those individuals that are here that wish to speak in favor or against um, these proposals or just comment or question um, this afternoon. And uh, we'll give you an opportunity to speak uh, on these conditional use requests. And then what we'll do is we'll um, uh, repeat that process this evening and the committee will make a recommendation to all of council this evening either uh, favorable um, or uh, to take time or t uh, to deny the uh, conditional use request. Those are the procedures. Um, at this time, if there's anyone here who are gonna be uh, speaking to the committee this afternoon, uh, reference these conditional use requests, please stand and be sworn in by a representative of our law department. Yes, if you plan on testifying, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today will be entirely the truth? Please signify by saying I do. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to entertain at this time, before we begin the, uh, the public hearings, a motion to accept the minutes of the previously held meeting. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. You guys have it? Very good. The first item that is up for a public hearing is um, authorizing a conditional use to install a digital billboard along I-77 at 530 Nome. Mr. Antonucci. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, Genesis Outdoor Advertising proposes to lease a small plot of land on the western edge of the golf course from the city of Akron in order to construct a digital billboard. Now, the proposed double-sided V-shaped billboard structure would be situated 60 feet from I-77, approximately 400 feet north of the southwest corner of the golf course. Each sign face would measure 14 feet by 48 feet for 672 square feet of area would be placed atop a monopole support. The overall height billboard structure would be at 60 feet. Uh, dense, mature vegetation along the south side of the golf course and further south along I-77 would screen the structure from the residential properties to the south. The west side of the highway uh, has an advertising display of model homes just to the north, large signage for graph growers at the east end of the property and a 75 foot in height digital billboard uh, just a bit further yeah, to the south. The proposed lease agreement with the city includes a monthly payment of $3,500, an advance payment of $200,000, and advertising and notification uh, space for city use. Both planning commission and planning staff recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Mr. Antonucci. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of the conditional use request at uh, 530 Nome Avenue. Please provide for the committee your name and address. My name is Tom Gray, and uh, I represent the owner Hit that little red button on the base of the microphone. There you go. Is that, that's, that's good, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we approached the, uh, the golf course with the proposition of uh, using just two feet of ground space in a totally un, unused uh, sort of useless area that would be in no way infringing upon the golf course itself or any of the cart paths or anything. So we, we spent probably three or four trips out there with Dante uh, DeAndre that, that manages the golf course for you guys. And uh, we did find a place to, to put the two feet that's way out of everybody's way and uh, then, we, then we began a negotiation. We started off talking to uh, uh, John Moore and uh, 
the mayor uh, actually initially was wanting more money for the city of Akron, so we we followed uh, suit and increased our offer. The total payment to the city of Akron to lease this two feet of ground space uh, will be more than eight hundred thousand dollars over the over the term of the uh, the lease, but initially. On day one, we would pay the city of Akron $210,000, paying the first five years in advance up front. And they felt that that would be a great way to do some uh, improvements for the golf course. I guess Good Park Golf Course could, could use a, a little facelift here and there, but they also felt that it was a nice, unexpected way to get some, bring some revenue into the city of Akron. I, um, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, sir. Um, I just got a quick question, and then I'm, I'm going to ask you to continue. Um, just a quick question. It, the, the lease agreement would come in as a separate. Uh, it's not part of this, right? That is part of this, yes. It is part of yes. the lease agreement as well, so we're voting on both the zoning and the lease agreement at the same time, or? Uh, well, law may be bringing in a lease agreement, but part of the conditional use would be involving the lease. Okay, I, I, mean, I just trying to make it clear for the committee our assignment is to vote on the zoning only or is it the zoning and the lease? Sorry, it's just Mr. trying to make sure Mr. we stay yeah, in our Mr. lane. Mr. Bowman can probably answer. That's what stay in our lane. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the specific um, ordinance, but um, generally we would come back with a separate That's what lease. I thought. Okay, good. And, I, and if I could, sir, I, I was going to say, I think at that time we can talk about the lease and the details of all that. Um, but at this point, I, we're just primarily here, I believe, for the um, conditional use request. I got you. So just, yeah, that's, just like I said, I just want to stay in our lane, that's all. So. Well, that's really pretty Thank much you. it. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Good. Thank you. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. But it's essentially that. It's uh, two feet of unused ground space almost up against the right-of-way fence on I Interstate 70, uh, 77. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I should also mention part and parcel of the agreement was the city of Akron will always have uh, in perpetuity one of the digital advertising displays to use at their discretion. In other words, if uh, I'm from Youngstown, but if, if you guys had a special event coming up in the city of Akron that you wanted to promote, it would go up there. Additionally, God forbid, we, we all hope no little kid ever gets kidnapped or anything, but it, we could immediately put an amber alert up on the digital board. Good. If we if we were about to get hit with a tornado, we could put it weather advisories on there. And that would be completely up to your safety forces to tell us. Sure. You know, we can do that. The technology is so great now, we can do that if, if somebody, if police department or some safety department contacted us we could have it up in two or three minutes wonderful thank you yeah. that's that's thank you thank you that was what I was wondering so answered the question before asked very good is there anyone else here are, are, are you done sir or is there anything else anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of the conditional use request on Nome Avenue 530 Nome Avenue anyone else wishing to speak in favor anyone else Okay, anyone wishing to speak against the condi conditional use at 530 Nome Avenue? Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone? Very good. We'll close the public hearing and, of course, invite you back this evening at 7 o'clock where we'll have an additional public hearing at 7 o'clock and we'll ask for comment then as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. I'll open it to the committee. Is, if there's any questions from committee members, um, I see Ms. Amobian and then Mr. Swarski. Ms. Mobian? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, discussing the agreement, actually, uh, I'm assuming that what I'm looking at is, are the terms really help me in terms of uh, being positive about this, because <laughs> I am not one that like, I don't like all these digital things along the highway, but I, I know that the city could use the money. <laughs> and. And I'm trying my best to understand it will be along the expressway part between the exit at Mall and Copley. Is it somewhere between there or beyond? 
No, that's, that's, that's right, between Mall and Copley. And it's, it'll be on the right side as you're driving north. Yeah, as exactly. The, the new one, the one that, that's already there is to if the you're left. going north. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this. I just wanted to say that that it actually sweetened the pie. Pie Very for good. me. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Swirsky. Yeah, I kind of feel like uh, this is a Moby on this, but I'm just curious, did, did this proposal, has, has this gone through the design review committee? Uh, this one has not. At this this one has not? No. Is there a reason why it hasn't? No particular reason. We could do that. Do we have a policy of all billboards should go through the design review committee? No, not at this point. We don't have a, a policy for that, for billboards, no. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else, sir? Okay. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Neal? No, I just want to say, um, I, I, they've reached out to me, um, talked by phone, it's by my not being able to catch up with them. Going, but worked with them on, on some other things that came, came by in the past. I think that was on the other side. At that time, it was just a sign, and I had no problem with it then. It's just nice to see that um, two feet of land can bring that kind of uh, resource, those kind of resources to the city. Too bad we don't have more land space like that that people want to rent. But no, I'm, I'm fine with it. It doesn't intrude on the on the neighborhood, it doesn't intrude with the golf course at all. So, again, good for the city. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Any other questions or comments from anyone? Yes, uh, Ms. Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just had a, a quick question. Is there any prohibition since it's on city land uh, for like a political advertisement? Mr. I'll sorry, yield what, to Mr. Antonucci. I, I, I believe the question was, would there be any restrictions reference uh, political advertising? Ooh, a good question. That's a lot of part of the question. That I is would, a lot of part of the question. I would. There is, I, I, there is a period of time for, for political ads in the zoning code, 45 days prior to an election. So I would imagine it would have to follow that. I don't know for sure. Maybe we'd have to look into that. Good question. Yeah, I, I can't answer that. A uh, lot apartment, yeah. I, for the record, I didn't say that. We. <laughs> we can look again. We can look into that question again. Yeah, the, a lot would have to do with what the lease itself I was, says. I was going to say probably that the lease agreement would uh, bear that out within there, either way, but. It's also a, a freedom of speech thing, I would guess. So, yeah, but it's a good question, though. Yes, I just thought it made a little difference because it, it, is, is it our land? And so it just yeah. seems like it just adds a little, uh, we're going to benefit from it this way. I'm just kind of wondering. I'd like to have some clarification on that. Thank you. Okay, very good. Mr. Neal? Thank you, sir. No, I, I, would, I know we're just doing the zoning piece, but it would be good when the, um, when the lease agreement part comes in, that deals with the dollars from our end, not so much from them, but from our end, that we have clear lines of demarcation as far as how those funds are going to be used. Um, over, I know it's over the course of the, the thing, but something that we've always struggled with here on council is having an understanding of where resources come when we get them. Since this is coming on, come, coming through a uh, piece of property that's park and recreation, understanding how those dollars are going to be used throughout would be, would be yeah. helpful. And possibly but even the, for the course itself. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Any other further questions or comments? I do have a question. Um, in terms of, I believe that's hole 14. Um, is this going to be behind the T boxes? You know what I'm saying? Um, if, you, uh, if you could visualize the uh, interstate highway, and then there's, a, there's obviously a uh, a ODOT right away fence there. Yeah. We would be, and then there's probably about, I guess maybe about 70 to 80 feet of just kind of like uh, jungle. It's like, it's not. Right, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it would be, it would be it in that general area. It's a sort of useless area. But it's behind the tee box is my question. Uh, um, if it's it behind be, the tee box. For it would be almost so. like in that, in that direct line where the tee boxes are. 
Okay. But uh, but obviously way way uh, far okay. away from. Him. All right. Your your manager there, uh, it's Dante, right? Yes, Dante. yes, yes. He's he he's thought comfortable that with it because that's the that would be the one. I, I I'm not speaking for myself. I know some golfers out there they are easily distracted and it screws up their <laughs> shots. I don't know any myself. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> yeah. Just a joke, but it's all good. Okay. Thank it's you. All good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very good. Well, well, again, invite you back this evening, and um, we'll discuss this further. At that time, now, hold number, uh, hold number two, legislation number two, the <laughs> second public hearing that we have this, this afternoon is um, ordinance authorizing conditional use to construct a storage building at 2822 Albrecht Avenue involving both Albrecht Avenue and Alpha Avenue. Mr. Antonucci. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, Kenneth Friend is proposing to construct a storage building on this property. The existing residential structure on the property has been raised to allow for the storage facility. The proposed 6,000 square foot structure would measure 60 feet in width along Albrecht Avenue and 100 feet in length from Alpha Avenue. A decorative facade would be created along the Albrecht Avenue streetscape with three sets of triple windows shaker shingle siding in the gable area, a four feet in height brick base and foundational landscaping. The bulk of the building will feature vertical metal siding. The facility will be capped with an asphalt shingle roof, reaching a peak height of just under 30 feet in height. The petitioner states that the building would be utilized to store radiators, air coolers, tanks, and other parts that would be installed at his commercial garage across Alpha Avenue. Ellet Radiator was established in 1957 and has seen ongoing growth in heavy equipment radiators. Uh, the new building would allow the company to operate more efficiently. Both Planning Commission and Planning staff recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Mr. Antonucci. Is there anyone here wishing to speak in favor of the conditional use request at 2022 Albrecht Avenue? Anyone in favor? Can you please provide for the committee your name and address. Uh, David Pellegra, 2231 Broad Boulevard, Cuyahoga Falls. Um, I'm here as the architect representing Mr. Friend, who's with me in the audience, just really to, to sum up or answer any questions you have. So thank you. Pretty straightforward. Thank you both for being here. Um, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of the conditional use request? Anyone else in favor? Okay, very good. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the proposal at um, 2022 Albrecht Avenue? Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone? Very good. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and uh, open up to the committee. Is there any uh, questions or comments from any committee members? Very good. Uh, Ms. Lobian? I'm just curious. I don't know anything about these elements or products, but some of them sound combustible to me. Uh, so we're not putting stuff in there that won't mix well and may create a, a hazard. Uh, no, they are really empty containers, oh. and, you know, as like your radiator in your car. Okay. So, no, there is not the okay. hazard. Thank you. Very good. Any further questions or comments? From, uh, Mr. Hope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, some time ago I talked to Mr. Friend, uh, you know, concerning this, and, and he told me what his plans were. He was. Uh, Purchasing the land, Ellet Radiator is a well-established uh, uh, business in our community, and uh, you know, and is a good neighbor. And uh, they've uh, you know done quite a bit of work there over the years. Uh, like I said, they are a good neighbor. This expansion is taking up some empty space uh, across the street. Uh, they took they they had to you know clean it up and uh, get it ready for this and. Uh, I think, I think it'll be a good addition, and, and uh, uh, it just means that El, El Radiator is looking uh, towards being a, a business around for uh, quite some time yet as far as expansion, and uh, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Very good. Hearing none, um, we'll now move on to item number three. However, we'd like to invite you both, both back this evening at 7 o'clock where we'll conduct another public hearing, and then, of course, we'll uh, make a recommendation to all of council. Thank you again for coming down. And the next item, item number three is uh, ordinance amending, supplementing Title 15 land usage, Chapter 153, Zoning Code, Section 153, 140, 
definitions by defining supportive housing and section 153.305 private parking and residence occupants by revising the amount of required off street residential parking. Mr. Antonucci. Mr. Chairman, committee members, uh, in an effort to modernize and assist with future residential developments within Akron, the planning staff is examining its current zoning code regulations regarding parking requirements. Currently, the zoning code states that the minimum amount of off street parking for single family is one space, and for two family and apartments is one and a half spaces per dwelling unit. In order to achieve consistency between single and two family off street parking requirements, the planning staff recommends reducing the amount required for a two family use from one and a half spaces to one space per unit. Also, the planning staff is of the opinion that the zoning code's off-street parking requirements for apartment uses are outdated and inflexible to today's, to today's housing demands. The zoning code where the one and a half space per apartment unit requirement has existed since 1975 does not distinguish between the varied types of apartment housing currently being built. The majority of these recent developments have been uh, focused on providing supportive housing for low-income, seniors, homeless, refugees, disabled, and veterans, because supportive housing developments typically have a majority of residents who do not possess vehicles, um, the current minimum parking requirements are unnecessary. Excessive parking minimums for supportive ha housing have contributed to overdevelopment, loss of green space, and have placed an added strain on our stormwater management system. In recent years, City Council has recognized the need to reduce the minimum amount of required off-street parking spaces for supportive housing and market rate uh, developments by passing conditional use ordinances to reduce the requirements. Uh, Madeline Park is one example. 243 Furnace Street with white space, Creative was another. Uh, Middlebury Commons, um, AMHA's recent Harmon Court, uh, Vern Odom, uh, those are all uh, developments where council has agreed to reduce the parking and where those um, developers have demonstrated that they haven't needed that much parking. Uh, in response to these recent trends, planning staff recommends reducing the amount of parking required for apartment uses to one space per unit. And if the apartment uses for any type of supportive housing, there shall be no minimum amount of parking required and a required maximum of one space per unit. Planning staff studied the residential parking requirements of several cities in Ohio and across the nation, like Akron. Cities such as Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati have eliminated parking minimums in downtown. Some cities such as Buffalo and Sandusky have eliminated parking minimums uh, citywide, while cities like uh, Harrisburg, Ithaca, and Pittsburgh reduced their parking minimums within special districts. Research has shown that zoning codes can vary widely uh, from city to city, but they, have, they tend to support the development and needs of their particular city. Planning staff believes that reducing the amount of required parking for residential uses and the abolishment of required minimums for supportive housing apartments is consistent with the needs of Akron. The zoning code changes won't eliminate the need or desire of a developer to provide parking spaces but will eliminate the overdevelopment of parking lots, as well as limit uh, the necessity of using developable land or removal of viable developments to satisfy excessive parking requirements. Furthermore, the proposed zoning code changes will also encourage smart growth practices, such as reducing the environmental and aesthetic impacts of parking lots and encourage residential development, and both planning commission and planning staff recommend approval. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone here wishing to speak in favor of the conditional use? Reference the uh, private parking and residence uh, parking requirements. Anyone else would like to speak in terms of uh, a favorable recommendation on this? Any comments? Anyone wishing to speak against the parking requirements? Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone hearing none will close the public hearing portion and open it up to committee. I do have a couple quick questions. Uh, so in essence, this would um, eliminate minimums is what, we're, what you're saying? That's correct. So we would basically say for supportive housing, that's just for supportive housing, for the supportive housing developments where, you know, there has been a uh, demonstrated, you know, 
lack of a need for all this well, parking. The residents don't have cars. Right, they don't have cars, essentially. Right. So in the supportive housing, we would say no minimum, which means you aren't required to have any parking at all. You would say that, though, the max should be one, one space per unit, okay? Um, for apartments, two family and apartments, we would go from one and a half spaces down to one space okay. per unit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for market rate and any, any kind of apartment development. Okay. Um, and basically that would be in line with our single family requirement, which is one space per house, per mm -hmm. house essentially. And so and you were citing other uh, communities out there where they have done the same in terms of lifting the minimum? Right, we took a look at a lot of communities and a lot of communities across the country are doing this, reducing that minimum. It's, it's basically a way to, to get housing in the city. There's codes have gone essentially to too much parking, Extreme. more of a suburban kind of thing, and there's been a demonstrated need, it demonstrated that we don't need that much parking. Environmentally, looking, it makes sense. Yeah, we're looking at a lot of asphalt, and we're trying to, you know, with the, you know, with the sewer issues that we're dealing with and all that, right. why contribute to more of that stormwater, you know, Very good. runoff. Interesting. Uh, questions or comments, Mr. Swarovski? So, that's, so we're eliminating uh, excess capacity, um, asphalt, uh, excess asphalt lots right. that, in addition to not looking good, also can have in the past uh, contributed to our uh, difficulties uh, and costs in handling runoff that go into the sewers. Is that what? Right. Is that the environmental it benefit yeah, that adds, you're talking yeah, about? It adds cost to the city. It also adds cost to a developer, and it's a little bit of a, of a hindrance for residential development when they have these higher, you know, parking requirements to have to deal with that extra. And it's, and it's costly to build parking. So other, other cities across the country are seeing that, you know, there's, there's this unnecessary burden on developers and the uh, um, environment you know, in requiring all this parking. So it actually would create more space that could be used either for future development, for ha for directly housing needs, um, or in some cases green space or, or other alternative uses. Right. Thank you, Ms. Amovian. Good, good thinking, guys. <laughs> Ms. Amovian. Um, Mr. Energy. This ordinance applies to all multi-residential facilities. That's correct. You just highlighted supportive housing as an example. Well, yeah, we're making a little bit of a dis distinction, though, between the supportive housing where, you know, the, the, the folks that are generally living in supportive housing don't, don't usually, have vehicles. usually have vehicles, yet we still have this requirement for parking for them. And so they have to come here for the conditional use requests and all of that. Um, so we feel that, you know, there's, we're not, we're saying that there's no minimum. They'll build the parking that they need. Right. And the market is going to drive what's needed, but we're going to say you don't have to have, you know, all of this parking. So if you come to us and propose a supportive housing facility, whatever you deem is what you would like to build for parking is what you will bring in as part of your proposal. That's right. And, and it may and be, be, yeah. No Right. No additional zoning conditions. Right, and if they're in an area that, that permits, uh, you know, apartment use, apartment development, they may not need a conditional use at all. Okay. So. The, the other question I have is if you build in a neighborhood where off-street parking will somehow create some congestion for the, the neighborhood, how would we handle that? Do we come, do they come in with special, do we, do we look at the area and determine whether we want to, for them to have more parking lots versus well, off street parking? Yeah, well we've, first off we feel that the, the market can, will drive kind of, you know, a developer's coming in, they have a development and they're gonna have parking for, you know, the residents there. Right. And they're gonna, they're gonna have to provide that. Uh, so they'll have a number that's going to work for that development. Um, you can lease parking in another parking lot nearby within 500 feet. That's, the code allows that. Okay. So if, if there's a, a problem, 
a developer can go look around and see if there's other parking that can be shared, for instance. So there's, there's ways around that. There are also streets that do allow parking. So, you know, some, you know, around the city, you can have parking on the street. And so that, that would work in that. Some cities have this very complicated formula for determining all of that. Yeah. We wanted to try to keep it a little more simple. You know, I understand what you're doing, and, and I've certainly visited a number of cities where there's a lot of off-street parking, and it's pretty congested. How do you notify the neighbors in that area as to what's happening? Well, again, if it's an area that's, say, zoned single family, where we'd be concerned about that kind of, con you know, congestion, then that development an apartment development would need a conditional use anyway. So they're going to be notified of those developments. In areas where it's zoned for apartment use, um, you know, it would be in areas where there already is somewhat of a, of a density, you know, a higher density of residential to where those, you know, those streets should be able to absorb that if there's any extra parking. And this is not retroactive. This is going forward. This is going forward. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, very good. We'll now move on the balance of the agenda. I'm just going to go ahead and recommend time on the balance, short of any questions or comments. Although, let me look here real fast. Yeah, I think 17 we can file. That's the petition. Mr. Oh, these are all filed. Never mind. Yeah, those are filed. Okay. Because number four is uh, still up for a vote, I believe. Uh, Hawkins and Alden, number four. Yeah. On time. Yep. Okay. Okay. We we'll just move into the new list of legislation at this point. And, um, first item is uh, item number two which is uh, approving and confirming the reappointment of Bruce Bolden to the City Board of Zoning Appeals, approving and confirming the appointments of Candace Everhart, Perry Clark, and Sarah Avalos to the Board of Zoning Appeals. If I pronounce that correctly, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, what you have before you are the uh, one reappointment, three new appointments to the City's Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, as you know, uh, the mayor's office has been trying to stay diligent on keeping up with boards and commissions. The Board of Zoning Appeals, um, the last time this council acted to um, reappoint someone was 2002. Um, most people, uh, there are a few on the Board of Zoning Appeals that have been operating, uh, which is, there's nothing illegal about it, we just haven't kept up with it for quite some time. So. We thought it was important to bring some new blood and some new uh, life to the, um, to the commission as well as diversity. And so um, you have what you have before you. So Bruce Bolden, as many of you know, um, has served well on the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for some time. And given that we're putting uh, um, several new folks on, we thought it would be best to keep him on for at least one more term so that he can help the, the newbies, if you will. Um, Candace Eberhard owns and operates her own realty and brokerage firm in Akron. Um, so she fulfills the real estate requirement for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Perry Clark, whom many of you know, um, fulfills the general contractor requirement. Um, Perry runs Truly Reaching You Ministries as well as uh, Home Remodeling, Home Repair. And then Sarah Avalos is a uh, Goodyear Heights resident and a graduate of the Mayor's Citizens Institute Class 1. Very good, sir. They will also join, pardon me, um, Melinda Scalfaro, whom this council um, appointed last year, a uh, resident of Firestone Park, and she is a licensed architect, which fulfills that requirement. Very good, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Uh, attached is um, um, somewhat of a, uh, a scaled-down resume type thing, uh, comments on all of the individuals here. So is there um, questions or comments? I just have a comment. Uh, it looks like it's pretty diverse. I've never heard of a birth doula. A doula? Doula. Doula? Doula. What is it? Doula is um, similar to a midwife in oh. terms of uh, core competency and 
Um, so they, uh, I'm obviously not an aficionado in, in this, but I do know enough to say that they're similar to midwives. Okay. Now, it's a pretty diverse group, and many of them we know, at least I know, and, and thank you. Very good. Uh, further comments? Questions? Consent agenda, okay? That'd be fine, thank you. Very good. I'd like to motion entertain a motion. Consent. Is there a second? Yeah. All those in favor of consent, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? The ayes have it. Three is approving the sale of vacant city-owned properties pursuant to the city's A Lot for Low program in order to facilitate productive reuse of the property and to reduce the cost of the city and the taxpayers and maintain vacant lots. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, right. committee members. This would be the sale of four lots. Um, some are being split amongst the neighbors. Some are going to one side. Um, this would be our, for our standard pricing, and they would all be for side yard expansion. Very good. Questions or comments? Consent okay? That'd be fine. Very good. Uh, is there a uh, motion? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. You guys have it. Four, approving the sale of city owned land to DNP of Ohio Partnership and Braymore Development Limited Liability Corporation. Uh, this would be the split of one lot to uh, both neighbors on either side. It would be at our standard pricing, and it would be for side yard expansion also. Very good. Questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion for consent? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. You guys have it. Item number five, approving the donation of city owned land to the Summit County Land Reutilization Corporation. Uh, this would be donating a parcel to the Summit County Land Bank. There's a house on there. They would handle the demolition of the property. Very good. Questions or comments? Consent okay? That'd be fine. Cons motion for consent. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Six, approving the sale of city on land to Brian and Natalie Capro Caperonis. <coughs> Determining said land is not needed for public use. Yes, um, this would be the sale of a vacant lot on Hickory Street. It would be for new home construction. Awesome. Questions or comments? Yes, yes Ms. Amobian. Oh. This, this land is off North Street. Is that the Hickory? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Further questions or comments? So we're we paying a dollar? A dollar a square, a square foot. foot. Hmm. Is there a reason we're paying so much? we are selling it um that was the price we determined years ago when we were developing this land okay <coughs> further questions or comments is that okay that'd be fine is there a recommendation is there a second all those in favor well, what's the recommendation consent agenda you yeah. do okay all those in favor of consent agenda okay. signify by saying aye aye ayes have it seven approving the sale of city on land to irg Sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Council Members. Uh, the City of Akron owns a property at 110 Goodyear Boulevard. Uh, we're selling this 17,000 square foot building to IRG for their redevelopment. Uh, we're requesting approval for that for $35,000. Very good. Questions or comments? Any questions? Is the, um, yeah, Mr. Neal. Excuse me, I'm just pulling up the legislation. Okay. We're selling the building. That's the appraised value, I take it? Uh, yes, this is, a, this is a very highly deteriorated building. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Consent agenda okay? That's correct. Is there a recommendation? Motion, motion for consent. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Eight. Thank you. Authorizing the mayor or his designee to accept title ownership of certain real property near Romig Road in order to provide for the future <coughs> redevelopment and reproductive reuse of the property. Yes, uh, this would be uh, accepting by donation um, some excess land up by the mall. We believe this was supposed to be included in a previous deal and the parcel number got left off, so this is just to clean up the area. They are donating to us. Very good. This is the uh, parcel that's on the south side? Yeah. Kind of oddball shaped on the yeah. side of the property. Kind of a weird shape. Yeah. Very good. Consent okay? That'd be fine. Questions, uh, Mr. Neal? Yeah, just 
I, I looked on the map. We don't have to worry about, there's no, nothing there where we have to do any kind of bio hazard cleanup. No, no, this is like on the very edge of the property. Okay. I don't believe this was ever really developed. Okay, okay, thank you. It doesn't seem very functional other than assemblies. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Amobian, did you have a question? No. Mr. Swirsky? No. Any other questions or comments? Consent okay? That'd be fine. All right. Recommendation for consent? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes do have it. Seven, I'm sorry, nine, authorizing uh, transfer of city-owned property on Sumner and Allen Street to Ak Akron Public Schools in exchange for property owned by Akron Public Schools on Dayton. Yes. Um, this would be part of uh, previous agreements we've had with Akron Public Schools. We are giving them some sites that they have built a school on that we acquired when we assisted them in acquiring Leggett. They would be giving us the vacant land um, on Dayton Street where the old Harris School sat. Chet, questions or comments? So this is just simply a, a land swap? Yes, sir. Okay. For the, any questions or comments? Is there a uh, consent okay on this one? That'd be fine. Okay. Recommendation? Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank and you. The ayes have it. Ten. And this may be the last. Approving and confirming the reappointments of David Hawkins and Charlie Ryder to the Urban Design and Historic Preservation Commission. Anybody? Yes, this would this just, one? yes, this is uh, Charlie Ryder and David Hawkins, two architects on our Urban Design and Historic Preservation Commission, and the mayor would like to just uh, is basically renew their, their appointments. It updates the appointments, they had a, the terms. Three appointments? Yeah. Are they? Mr. Swarsky? No, yeah, these are ask, um, this came up earlier. Do they, what is the purpose of the urban design? Could you remind everybody? Well, urban design, yeah. So in, in, by code, uh, if there is a, uh, something to be done with a historic structure or designation of a historic area or building, okay. uh, they are required to review those to review okay. historic properties, designation, and also for certificate of appropriateness, if somebody's gonna be making major changes to a historic structure, they would, they have to approve that at a public hearing. And then actually that would end up going through planning commission and city council as well. So, so they, they review and then make a recommendation? Yes. For approval or disapproval? That's correct. Okay. Then we also, we can use them also for you know, various, as consultants essentially for the city, for things that we would like to get some, uh, some feedback on design, uh, you know, f of city projects and that kind of thing. So we would use them in that, in that capacity as well. Okay, There's yes, also yes. some renewal plans and redevelopment plans that call for review by urban design, so they have to look at those things as well. Yeah, if, I mean, it's in a, if it's in a specific plan, they would look at those. At you've those assembled things. quite a, you know, a group of people with a lot of expertise in this area. I mean, that's great use of them. What about their relationship to billboards and signs? That's, uh, we use those, them on a, sort of as a consulting, uh, unless it's in a renewal area or something where we have to go through a process uh, where they have to look at that. Generally, we would we'd use them as for, for feedback just for help for our okay. staff, because we don't really have a design staff in planning right now. So we, we don't have them. a design no. staff? No, so okay. we would use them so, for those kind of so things. So we're not really looking at the designs in a professional way that for billboards and things that go through <coughs> city council, is that correct? Well, we're or? looking at them in, in, in a planning sense. In yeah. a plan, right, yeah. the, the land use kind just, of thing. Yeah, the particular one right, that we have. Right, but that, um, could that be, uh, in a, become a duty of, of this commission to review uh, and make recommendations about particular billboards or signs that we go up? Could that be, could we, we have this great team of people here. Yeah. And it seems like we get more of those really than some of these historic things. Right. And maybe I'm not well, right. Well, yeah, that, that in and yeah. of itself is not codified. It's not in the code that we would have to do that, but that's something that we could, the council may want to consider. Okay. We'll discuss that further. Sure. Ms. Okay. Mobian? Mr. Neal had his hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Neal? Mm -hmm. 
Um, just, just a quick question. I don't know if our citizens know how they can become a part of this process, but I know I have a gentleman, um, Mr. Carson Barnes, I think you've met, who's very knowledgeable in this area. And one of his concerns was, you know, we're tearing down homes. And if these folks don't have an understanding of the neighborhoods, they don't know whose home they're tearing down. Like we could be tearing down the home of, and I'm not saying we did this, but of, of, a, of a James Ingram, a Rita Dove, uh, uh, Fritz, Fritz Pollen. You know, some of these historic folks that have, have lived here. Have we ever, one, do we have a way for citizens to put their name in the hat? And then two, have we ever thought of having sort of like a citizens advisory group for certain neighborhoods where other folks just wouldn't have this institutional knowledge? Well, there's a, there's a, actually our progress through preservation group is very, you know, active in nominating. They're starting to do more of this, nominating buildings for historic designation. And if there is that out there that's a building that we need to know about, you know, we would ask, you know, that's just like the council person can get with progress through preservation. They can nominate these structures for historic designation. If it becomes a local landmark, you know, then those structures have to be protected. So that's, that is something that Urban Design and Historic Preservation Commission can do. Okay. Did, just as some time, you know, we could be informed on that process and how we can communicate that and inform our, you know, our constituents, that would be great. And Mr. Chairman, I, uh, members of the committee, we Mr. always, Hart. if you want to send, if you have any ideas or names, just shoot me, or I would say Ellen, but Ellen's on maternity leave, an email, and we do keep a file of all people who are interested in what their expertise is, and we, we use it. And the Mayor Citizens Institute, now that we have one class done and the second one's about ready to graduate, we look to them as well because they've had eight weeks of uh, sort of exposure to all the city departments and things of that nature, so we're trying to expand our pool. But if you ever have a name, just send them along to, to myself or to Ellen, and we'll put them in the hopper. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Movian. Yeah, just curious, have we used these folks that much since they since we created this? Yeah, we pretty much have. Yeah. Yeah. I know we utilize them for the Main Street um, mm -hmm. establishment. That They're looking at the, the landmark project, the Bowery Building, uh, some things with Civic Theater most recently last month went through. Okay. So Whatever that. happened to the signage on the, the particular business on Main Street? that were a lot of concerns expressed about. Yeah, I think council recommended disapproval of that and filed it. Yeah, I, I know that, but I'm just wondering, did they come back with something else? No, we haven't heard from them. Did they ever open the business? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I don't know if okay. they're. Okay. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. For the questions or comments? The recommendation for consent? Is there a move? Is there a second? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We're adjourned, thanks. Chris.
Kane and Fusk uh, samples here. I'd like to call the public service meeting to order. Like approval on our minutes from the past meeting. Is there a motion for approval? I have a motion. Is there a second? Okay. Councilman Fusco made a motion to approve the minutes. Councilman Hoke approved. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none. Okay. Um, we're missing one uh, council member. Uh, here and that would be uh, Tara Mosley Samples is not with the committee right now. Everybody else is here. Okay, having said that, um, there are no items on the old agenda, and but in our new agenda, that's what I was looking for. Our new agenda, we have an ordinance ratifying the actions of the Director of Public Service in contracting with Liberta, would that be correct? House? Liberta. Liberta Construction for the emergency repairs of the trunk sewer located near the intersection of Mall Avenue and Exchange Street and declaring an emergency. Mr. Luttle, will you be speaking on that? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, we received a call that the road was caving in on the north side of Mall there on Exchange. Uh, when we investigated our, our trunk sewer storm, trunk sewer, the 30-inch segmental block was caved in. So we actually contracted with Liberta to come in, and they had to replace about 40 feet <coughs> of that trunk sewer. And because of where it was at, and the next manhole was in the right of way, we had them go ahead and add a manhole while they were doing the work. So. Okay. Um, Mr. Lytle, would uh, any of this condition be caused because of the use of the road or was just natural deterioration? That road is like the dead end of the mall, yeah. so it's just the back. So no, I mean, when the sewer is 1927. Okay. So the age of the sewer. Um, metal block is it's kind of like the tile sheets. When one starts to go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they, they just fall in like... Um, it's kind of like building blocks, boom, they just fall in. So. Because Rocky Knoll Campus had called, and that was being used as an emergency um, during their construction period. It was reopened yes. so that their residents could use right. it. Right, it's and not I'm, heavily traveled road at yeah, all. Yeah, it isn't at all. No. So, uh, but it could be now, because we now have it fixed. We have it fixed, yes. Already, sounds good. Are there any questions from the committee? Any questions from members of council? Seeing none. What Consent's is the fine. pleasure? Consent's Consent? Fine. Okay. Is there a motion for consent? I have a motion from Councilman Fusco, a second from Councilman Hope. All in favor, signify by, by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, this will go on the consent agenda. <coughs> okay. Is there anything else to come before the Public Service Committee? Right. Then we are adjourned. Thank you. Ready? All right, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. We are, we are running behind. I'm going to call a uh, public safety meeting to order, please. <laughs> All members are present. Uh, we did have a meeting last week. Can I get approval of those minutes, please? Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye, thank you. We do have two old, uh, or two old pieces that were taking time on our first one uh, was an ordinance authorizing a purchasing agent without the formality of publicly advertising for bids to en enter into contract or contracts with Applied Concepts Inc. for the purchase of 10 stock or two moving radars to declare an emergency, I believe. I think we're going to file that item because I do have an amendment, a new uh, piece. We find it, yeah. You do have a substitute. Yeah, a substitute. Uh, but I can deal with that on the new legislation, right? right? All right, right. thanks. 
And then our second piece, uh, ordinance amending and supplementing Title IX, Chapter 92, Animals, <coughs> Section 92.99 of the Akron Codified of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. Uh, the sponsor, are we going to continue time on that? Whatever the pleasure of the committee is, I, I did have some information I wanted to share. Um, uh, you know, I know a lot of the concern was um, the jail time associated with misdemeanor four, but I think that's because most of us are not uh, familiar with, we've never been in trouble with the law, so a minor misdemeanor or what the next level of offense is, which is the misdemeanor four. And I had spoke to our chief prosecutor and just had her send me some things on what other things are associated with misdemeanor fours. Misdemeanor fours, I believe, are associated with public nuisance. Um, so things like a open container in, a, in one of our parks, um, those types of things. So I, I think, you know, we, we uh, elect judges to use discernment and discretion in how they sentence folks. There are a lot of things that have jail time associated with them once you get over a minor misdemeanor. And our judges aren't putting folks in, in, in jail for that. So, uh, or sentencing them to jail time for that. So really, unless, uh, uh, since that's the next level of offense, a misdemeanor four, um, you know, I don't know what else our, our next step would be. So, um, I, like many of you, have probably heard from, you know, our constituents, and uh, that's been the only concern is the way it was advertised. I mean, and that, that makes good headlines, jail time, but once, once I've explained to constituents, um, you know, the difference between a minor misdemeanor and a misdemeanor four, they have no problem with it. So, again, whatever this committee chooses to do, but um, uh, I think since that was the, the one glitch for everybody, um, once you come to understand that the Ohio Code for uh, misdemeanors is not too much more to, you know, is left over to the judges at that time, because um, I'm not for increasing the fines above, you know, $250 by, by no means, increasing the level of the misdemeanor. So, but if the committee wants to take more time, that, that's up to the committee. Uh, I guess I'll ask this question. You're okay with your legislation as it is now? I mean, with the $100 first offense, then you have the second offense would be a $250 fine up to a 30-day jail time? I'm fine with it because I understand how we've implemented even a $100 fine. We don't hit somebody with a $100 fine the first time we go out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the dog wardens, Mr. Valley's department, they try to verify and, and notify and work with everything. Um, I think the reason for bringing the legislation in, it's in is when they do uh, do their due diligence and hit them with the $100 fine and the, the uh, person um, whose dog is creating the, the offense um, still continues not to, to uh, correct the situation. This gives them one more tool in their toolbox, you know, to, to levy mm -hmm. a, a fine on the person, a, a higher fine. Anybody else uh, want to say anything? And go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Keith. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe when we uh, had our special meeting that you called, and I want to thank you for that, it came to our attention that um, sometimes the police department isn't aware what the dog warden has done or the dog warden isn't aware that the police department had gone out there. I think it's, it would be important if we move forward any farther on this that we put a policy and a procedure in here that what goes along with the first notice, what steps are, happen, and by whom uh, of that first notice so that we're educating as well as addressing it. And I think it, I was surprised that only uh, there had been seven cases that had gone to court with a number of them being dropped. So um, I think it is an issue, and I think for some people it can be a, a, a rough one, but I believe if we're going to even tamper with this at all, we should do it completely and with a, a policy and a procedure that, that we're all aware of, not mm -hmm. just a, a couple yeah. of departments, but we're all working in sync 
together so that when I get a call for it, I say, well, our first step is we're going to send out our, our community officer. And then, or my first step might be a letter from me saying I've gotten a complaint. And, you know, if I get another complaint, I'll be sending out the community officer. And then after that, the dog warden. And, but I don't know if it's all so clear of what steps we are taking. So with that, thank you, Mr. No, Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. And I mean, I kind of echo with what you're saying. I, I, I support a higher fine, uh, but then I support educational peace and uh, maybe getting on the same page as our animal warden, our uh, director of neighborhood assistance and our uh, Akron Police Department. So really in regards to this piece, if you're not gonna move forward with any more work or changes or, you know, to this piece, I mean, you can pull it or we can vote it down, or I'll vote it down, I mean, because I don't agree with this piece. Well, I think part, part of what you're asking for is not within our jurisdiction. That's an administrative piece. Um, because if you remember what I, what I suggested, this is the next level of fine that would come with it. What I'd like to see us do is suggest to the administration that we establish a volunteer citizens animal pat uh, patrol support group. Um, I've done some of the research. I, I've got residents that are willing and have volunteered. They want to become a part of this. Um, but again, that's, that's something we can only suggest to the administration. We can't tell them to do that, okay? So the, the piece that we're doing is putting the, legis, uh, the piece of legislation in, pe in place that would give them, again, another tool uh, for enforcement. We can suggest, and I, and I agree with you, um, we need to have uh, to make sure that all those parts and pieces are in place. But we can only suggest it. Now, understanding how, how short staffed they are, that's why I would, uh, I have the information, that's why I would suggest that um, we work with them and encourage to develop a uh, uh, volunteer citizens animal control support group to work with uh, our neighborhood assistance department to help with this educating citizens um, and getting people um, in, in, in involved. I use this example when I talk to a lot of citizens. It used to be you just see people walk in the neighborhood, walking their dog. They wouldn't carry a bag. But over time, people were educated. Now you see more people, when they walk their dog, they carry the bag and they pick up <coughs> their dog. Yeah. I strongly believe that as more people uh, get involved and if we develop the citizen support group, this right here can be uh, something that can be uh, people's uh, habits can be changed in how they care for their dogs too. Um, so, uh, so in regards to this piece, I because I, I want to move forward. Do you want us to? I mean, what's your recommendation? Are you going to continue to work on this? Do you think the committee should take some time, or do you uh, want us to again, put a vote? I stated towards? at the beginning, if the committee wishes to take time, it can. But there's no more. There's nothing more to be worked on. I cannot okay. create a, another, um, I, I can't uh, create a, a misdemeanor uh, uh, six, a misdemeanor mm -hmm. seven. That's, those, that's set by the state. So. And I think we reach, have reached out to our chief prosecutor um, to see if there was some other um, way we can address the fine situation. Again, if you look at the code, mm -hmm. the next thing over to misdemeanor four um, is that uh, 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 over the minor misdemeanor is that misdemeanor four and I, I, I'll be happy to forward so that you can see because then what we may want to do is look at well do we want to hit somebody with a jail time for an open container in our city's parks or if they're too if their music's too loud because that's you know a public disturbance I was educated when I looked at this and saw what a misdemeanor four could okay. be and have jail time associated but whatever the pleasure of the, the uh, committee is, like I said, I know I've heard, I know you've heard from residents. Mm -hmm. You notice that, that, this is, that this is a concern. They're asking us to do something. This is the best option today. Today, okay, thank you. Any other questions, committee members? Uh, Mr. Sorsky. Um, well, I can't support this ordinance the way uh, it's written today. I think um, I agree a lot with okay. some of the things Mrs. Keith brought up. Um, if there is a problem, it needs to be addressed with a comprehensive plan which identifies action steps. 
I don't see any of that in here. And instead, I see something that relies on way, way over the top uh, punishment measures. Uh, and, and I think I would ask you either withdraw this, take time, but I cannot support what we have today. Okay, thank you, Councilman. I appreciate it. Uh, Councilwoman Sims, please. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, uh, last week, I, I thought um, uh, the meeting was really good, and very telling. Um, I, I, I think we all can agree that uh, we have some challenges around this issue in our city. So my recommendation at this point in time uh, would be to ask for um, a little more time uh, to see if, in fact, there's some, some, something that we can add uh, to the legislation uh, to make it uh, a bit more viable. I think I don't want to miss the value in what um, Councilman Neal is explaining to us regarding what automatically happens as a result of uh, moving uh, the level of misdemeanor uh, uh, higher, that that automatically triggers jail time. Um, so I, I don't think that uh, it makes a whole lot of sense to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I would ask that we would uh, take some additional time. If it, all right, thank, thank you, you, Councilwoman. Any other questions or comments in regards to this piece? Uh, well, on this piece only, I don't know what the committee wants to do, but I'll ask if we're going to continue taking time, if we have a, a vote to favorably move it forward or uh, vote against it. I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, uh, disapprove the piece that we're currently uh, looking at. Oh, did you ask for a motion? I apologize. So we did have a motion. I apologize. Anybody second? Okay. Mr. Neal, are you seconding that? No, he can't. He's not on my committee. Oh, all right. Is there a second for time? No second for time. Okay. So I made the motion make a for motion. an adverse report or file whatever I mean no I, I don't want to file I want to I don't support it okay you're the chairman I second that as it stands what are you seconding I'm sorry uh, not to support the second yeah disapproval disapproval yeah apologize okay okay you have a motion and a second and a second all in favor who abstained? I, I voted to disapprove. So, one, two, three, right? Four. And four. Swarovski. Okay, four, I'm sorry. All right. Four, four, and one again, one abstention. Okay. Okay. Got that? Right. All right, moving on to the new legislation. All right, number 12. Ordinance authorizing the purchasing agent without the formality of publicly advertised for bids to enter into a contract or contracts with custom signals, Inc. for the purchase of 10 Pro Laser 4 bundles for the use by the City of Akron Police Department and declare an emergency. I believe we have Lieutenant Decatur, you're here to speak about that. And, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, We'd like to purchase the uh, new handheld radar guns. Um, they are to replace our old and worn out radar guns. These are necessary for, for criminal uh, traffic offenses and um, they'll be used in neighborhood enforcement, uh, highway enforcement, and also with our, our grant enforcement. Um, Currently, we have seven operating radar units, and these would be uh, shared amongst the traffic officers as well as the patrol officers. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, the piece that I have, I just want to make sure we're talking about the right thing. It says on the back, it says, if I pronounce that, LIDAR? Yes. Accessories, grips, batteries, USB cables, carrying case, and warranty. That's just for the accessories? 
correct, or is there radar units also involved in that one? There are radar units also involved. Okay. The radar and LIDAR are, are pretty much the same thing. They just operate on two different uh, principles. Radar operates on uh, sound. The, the unit sends out a sound wave. It bounces off the car, comes back to the radar unit. The radar unit determines the speed based on the length and the amount of time it takes for that sound wave to bounce off their car and come back. LIDAR just uses lights. It uses a laser. So it'll bounce a beam of light off that car and it determines the amount of time that it takes for that light to come back to the car and then from that it can calculate the speed of, of the car. So they're essentially the, the same thing. Okay. Um, all right, any questions, committee members? Councilwoman uh, Keith, please. Thank you, Lieutenant Decatur. Are these all uh, just replacements for what we have, but upgrade replacements, would that be correct? Yes, just uh, more modern. Okay. Um, and um, these can be used inside your car as well as outside a police car? Correct. Okay. Um, okay, have you read the amendment? No, that's actually a 14A. Okay. So that's why I want okay. to. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. No, thank you. I just want to get. I'm, I'm a little confused, Lieutenant, sorry, I apologize. I know Mr. Hardy's here and he might be able to shed some light on this because we have two pieces here in front of us. We're, we have this piece, number 12, that states there's 10 pro laser, four bundles, and then I also have another piece that uh, we have an amendment for, obviously for 10 stock or two uh, moving radar. So th this basically is roughly 20 radar units? Correct. Okay, 20. Okay, that's where my confusion was, but I was right. Cool. And there are 20 replacements? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, council members, any other committee members? No questions or comments? Oh, Councilman Hoke? Yeah, I, had, I just wanted to clarify uh, the pro laser that, that we're talking about here in uh, number 12 uh, is for the uh, uh, neighborhood. And, and look and or as for or traffic They'll basically be used citywide including neighborhoods okay all right but but the other ones when they were brought in as far as the stalkers they were they were brought in and, and they were uh we were told <laughs> that they would be put into patrol cars so so the stalkers go into the patrol cars and the pro lasers go into traffic and uh they're for you know but i mean but yes, there, it, there, there are two different two different uses and two different types of vehicles, two different types of radar units, right? Um, well, like I said before, one is a radar unit, the other is a LIDAR unit. Okay. Um, the LIDAR is more advanced and the uh, traffic officers generally use the LIDAR units. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Councilman. Any other questions, comments, committee members? Uh, Councilman Kilby. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I haven't been following this that closely, but I'm a little confused too. Uh, this is substitute, right? I mean, no, this is actually the substitute's coming later, 14A. Okay. All right. So 14A is going to substitute for this number 12? No. No. no 14A is going to substitute for something we've took time on two weeks ago. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Councilwoman Sims. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, last week when we were talking about the stalkers, uh, Mr. Brown mentioned that there was some kind of recycle uh, benefit we received from uh, repla the replacement of the stalkers. Are we getting the same benefit for replacement? We can turn in our old units and we receive credit. I, I'm not so, sure exactly how much credit so it just goes credit to the purchase of yes. the next one. thank you thank you councilwoman any other questions comments uh, lieutenant what's your pleasure on this consent agenda or is this something you need passed like immediately where we need to suspend the rules uh, sooner we have them the better okay committee it's motion you. I have a motion for consent we have a second all in favor aye, aye. Anybody opposed? All right, we're going to put it on the consent agenda, Lieutenant. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate Mr. it. Mr. Chairman, that's for the, the uh, pro lasers? Yes, number 12. Okay. 
Thank you. All right, moving next into number 13, uh, authorizing the mayor or his designee to accept an assistance to firefighters grant from the Department of Homeland Security for the purchase of a new fire-related vehicle, authorizing the expenditure of local matching funds from the appropriate account or accounts, authorizing the purchase of said vehicle after publicly advertising for bids and declaring an emergency. And go ahead. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I have with me Captain Cractus from our EMS Bureau to help answer any questions you may have. Um, earlier this year, we did submit a grant to FEMA um, for a sport utility vehicle to help increase our community outreach efforts. And uh, we were fortunate enough to be awarded this grant, so we are asking uh, to accept it um, and to be able to purchase the SUV. This SUV uh, will help with our continued efforts to address community needs uh, for social services as well as home safety programs. Uh, the Akron Fire Department will use this vehicle to perform home visits for both opiate addiction issues and high system utilizers in an effort to guide those individuals to proper definitive care. Um, this time, I'll be happy to answer along with Captain Krakus any questions you may have. Good, thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions? Uh, Councilwoman Keith, please. Thank you so much for coming down. Um, have we already piloted this a little bit yet to see how it works? Have we done any pilot? Um, yes, our, our QRT program is currently underway. It's about 18 months into it. Um, and our ARV, our alternate response vehicle, is a little bit over a year. This is uh, the next step uh, to continue that uh, community outreach by addressing needs of individuals that are higher utilizers uh, in order to try to reduce some of our calls for medical service. I, and for some reason, I just thought we had piloted something similar to this. Uh, I'm on the EMS board, and it's for um, those that can be handled without, you can tell when the call comes in, you're pretty sure that you don't need to send an ambulance. It's, that's why I wondered if this was part of that pilot that I'm thinking of on the EMS board. Um, no, this is, it, it's in conjunction with that. Okay. Uh, it's just another step. Alrighty. Okay, good. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any other questions, comments? Uh, with that, uh, District Chief, what's your pleasure? Consent's fine. Consent's fine. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, thank you. We'll put that on the consent agenda. I think that's it for you guys. All right, thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Uh, number 14, uh, amending and supplementing Title VII, Traffic Code, Chapter 76, Parking Regulations, Section 72.221, uh, Parking Large Vehicles in Residence Districts by updating limitations on what kind of large vehicles may be allowed to park in residential districts and declare an emergency. I don't know if anybody from the law department's here, but I actually requested this myself. Uh, anybody here to talk about this? If not, I'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, Brian, but basically I'll let my committee know. This is just uh, basically cleaning up some language uh, in regards to some large uh, vehicles in uh, residence districts, obviously uh, they're highlighted uh, below. And I don't know if you have anything to add, I yeah, apologize. Uh, I, I did not specifically work on this myself individually, but I do have some knowledge of it, uh, Councilman okay. Camber. Um, so basically this is cleaning up the, the code to make it very explicit uh, that tractor trailers uh, that are parked in residential areas are not permitted. Uh, the way that the code was phrased, there was a potential ambiguity that could have been construed to mean that they were exempted uh, per the definitions of, under the revised code. This clears that up and makes it explicit. Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds perfect. Thank you. Uh, any questions from committee members? Uh, Councilwoman Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the only uh, vehicle in question was a tractor trailer? Uh, no, but I think that's primarily uh, 
um, the, where the, the issue, the ambiguity lies, is really with that, and this makes that explicit. Um, it also talks about refrigeration trucks. Basically, you're talking about anything that requires a CDL to drive or a learner's permit for CDL. You, you just can't park that outside of your residence. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any questions or comments? Uh, I know, Mr. Swarski, you still feel... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, like, look, I'd like to take time on okay. this because uh, I think there might be some additions that yeah. might uh, help this. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, before I call for a vote, just uh, Rich asked if we could take time, to committee members, because uh, he actually has something that he would like to maybe particular uh, to input in this uh, later on. Uh, so hopefully you can move forward with the law department. Right. I think and by next week. Okay. No, I appreciate that. And I'll have no time. I don't have no problem taking time, but let me take uh, Councilman Kilby's question before we call for a vote. Yeah, I guess if you talk about, you know, anything that requires a CDL it might cover it, but what about a big box truck? It's not a tractor trailer. It's not a cab, but it's a big commercial yeah. vehicle. Where does that... Uh, or is that covered? Yeah, I, and again, I'll, I'll attempt to answer the question, so I'll put the caveat on it that I, I w was not the drafting party, so I don't have all the answers, but I do know that there is a, a, an exception in there that covers vehicles that are in excess of nine feet tall. So okay. I would assume that the, the box truck would be covered by that. Yeah, so. and can you use weight of the truck to determine whether it can be in a residential neighborhood? Uh, you know, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. If that's in the, the code, I have to take a look back and get you okay. that answer. So right now, it already covers vehicles, boxes that are nine feet or more? That's what yeah, and, and the reason that there's a potential ambiguity the way that it's phrased is it talks about, it refers to them as commercial vehicles in excess of nine feet tall. So commercial vehicle aspect is where you get into that question about, and, and really the definition of commercial is taken from the revised. So what if it's eight and a half feet tall? Then it would <laughs> If it was... Right, a commercial Seems vehicle. Like you ought to just, uh, someone's ought to trim the box a little bit just to allow it, but I'll leave it up to you. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. I remember when we passed this a bunch of years ago, Mr. Fusco was working, he was actually an employee of the city at that time. We did the truck thing back a oh, dozen years ago. And one thing I would remind, in case you know, there's inquiries from the community, we did when we we enacted this piece of legislation. There were a limited number of individuals that were grandfathered because they had, you know, they bring us a, a semi tractor into uh, into their life. So, just to kind of to quell anybody that's going to pick up the phone and call and say, "Oh, you're kicking me out," there were some individuals that were grandfathered because they had been bringing those vehicles into the neighborhoods prior to that just if that question comes out for anyone. So, thank, thank you, you Councilman. Councilman Fusco. I'd support further study. Um, just to, if I understand this correctly, this is primarily for the public right of way, not on private property. Is that correct? Because if it's on private property, it should probably be in planning, but if it's on the public right of way, which I think this is, it's on the public right of way, right? In the street or is it on private property? No, I believe it's in residential districts, so it would be on well, private so properties. Right. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, yeah, I just have a couple questions. And it, mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I would entertain or ask maybe for a week's time just to clear some questions up. But I, I absolutely support the initiative. Okay. Yep, no, thank you, Councilman. Any other questions or comments? Councilwoman Sims. So, Mr. Chairman, was the intent of the, of the legislation specifically uh, for the entire residence, are we talking about right away? And people are still have some freedom for their private property. Well, my mistaken was I asked the law department to look into this so we can clarify any language in it uh, that in regards to the residence, residential districts for uh, tractor trailers that are parked in driveways out on the street. Um, you know, now I have a colleague that wants to look into adding to this piece. Okay. So that's what my uh, whole conversation started several weeks ago or months. Uh, and I, if I may clarify, there is one exception, I believe, for um, vehicles that are parked 
um, for service purposes. So if you have a, a truck out in front of a home delivering something or doing a service for a limited period of time, that's not covered by this. It would just be simply the intent to leave it there sort of overnight or, you know, as a, as a vehicle you tool around town in. Good. Councilman Kilby. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, there's residential areas in the city, like somebody might have an acre of land and uh, maybe he drives a truck and pulls it behind his house uh, when he's home, but would that person be allowed to file for a conditional use to continue to do that? Or would that, that's not, this is zoning, right? This is, is this zoning or no, just an ordinance, traffic ordinance, right? So there would be no exception to that. I mean, there's no way he could ask for a variance on that if he's not grandfathered in, like Mr. Freeman said, right? Well, uh, I, I'm being told that it's part of the, the zoning code as well, but um, so that they could ask for a variance on that. Um, but I would have to get back to you on that. I'd look into that myself before yeah, I because answer with any confidence. You know, there are places in the city where there's big lots, and if someone's parking a even a tractor trailer behind his house and no one's complaining, I don't see what the problem is, but I know it's kind of hard to craft an ordinance <laughs> that covers everything, but uh, you know, that's, I think that's something we should take into consideration. Good. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Omovian had her hand up. Just curious, I know that uh, several months ago, I believe, we had a provider of ice cream. His truck, they came down here to talk about the truck and how the neighbor said it was blocking her driveway. Would this cover that? Is that, is that a similar kind of vehicle that would be prohibited? I know he was planning to do something yeah. at a different location. So I, I, I believe that that was a similar situation and they would have run afoul of, of this ordinance, which was part of the reason that they had requested the conditional use. I see. Okay. Ah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, Rich, do you still want to take time, correct? Yes, I think okay. even more so now. Yep. So uh, you were making a motion for time? Motion for time. All right. Can I get a second? I'll go ahead and second it. Oh, did you, Bob? All right. So uh, Bob Hoke second that motion for time. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. So we'll take time on that. All right. Moving into our substitute uh, offered as an amendment uh, from the one piece earlier, authorizing the purchasing agent without the formality of publicly advertising for bids to enter into contract or contracts with Applied Concepts, Inc., for the purchase of 10 Stocker two moving radars and declare an emergency. And I don't know, we have, I'll just, for the record, Lieutenant Decatur is still here. We have Chief uh, Ball and then obviously our Deputy uh, Mayor, uh, I can Chief of Staff, first. James Hardy. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I will, of course, defer to Lieutenant Decatur and Chief Ball for the technical questions and the use of the cameras. However, um, we felt it was important um, to bring substitute legislation with language and it was also included in the LIDAR um, uh, piece of legislation that is now on consent to um, make it clear that we welcome council members uh, referrals and requests to the police department for specific locations in terms of the use of radar and LIDAR. So for example, um, if Wilbeth Road is where you're getting the calls and you want the budgeted hours on Wilbeth Road, we, we want to know that. And we wanted it in the legislation that way. Um, so we felt, particularly through the leadership of yourself, uh, Councilwoman Keith and Councilman Hoke, that we hear you. This is a very important and critical issue to the mayor and to the chief as well. And so you hear oftentimes before we do where the hot spots are, and so we want to be as responsive as, as we possibly can. I defer uh, uh, to APD to answer sort of how they how they view that, but my guess is we met internally and we had a long conversation about this, and we do understand and agree that speeding in the residential areas is, is a significant problem. In fact, we think it's a citywide problem even on the arterials and collectors. And so we want to remain open 
with City Council on this and and hear you and respond accordingly. So thank we you. wanted that language in the ordinance, hence the substitute. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hardy, I appreciate that. And I don't know if you have anything to add, Lieutenant Cater, but I definitely would love to hear from our very own Chief Paul uh, in regards to uh, your concerns or how you feel about speeding or what feedback you get or anything like that, if that's okay. Uh, our speeding issue is something that we get a lot of complaints for. We've been responsive to it. We changed uh, the way that we are doing enforcement probably at least six months ago, committing 12 hours a day to specifically radar enforcement in our neighborhoods. Uh, Lieutenant Decatur sets up a schedule for our enforcement officers and they rotate in amongst the, the uh, wards in the city so that every one of them has consistent coverage. Uh, there certainly are limitations that exist for us with staffing right now. A unit at one time was 72 full-time police officers in traffic is down to about 20 now. Uh, so we have to work within those constraints that exist for us as far as manpower. But uh, we did commit to at least 12 hours a day uh, probably about six months ago. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Chief. The only thing I would add to that is that, um, and Chief Ball can speak to this as well, but I know that public safety leadership and the mayor have been talking about how we can we can make sure that our staffing is appropriate for the needs and responsiveness of the community, including speeding in the traffic bureau. So I think that's a conversation that's worth continuing with, uh, with council members. Um, and it's also important to note that the dollars that are being spent, my understanding, the dollars being spent to replace these cameras as well as the LIDAR are actually coming out of fines and not necessarily um, tax dollars. So these are coming out of fines. Uh, um, and I think that uh, the last thing I'll say is that um, by purchasing these, I don't, I want it to be clear and on the record that we are not ending conversation on some of the other um, concepts that were brought up uh, eloquently last week, excuse me, two weeks ago by uh, yourself, and Mrs. Keith, and uh, Mr. Hoke. Uh, Mayor's office is very open to continue those conversations and seeing how we can improve upon speed enforcement in the neighborhoods. All right, thank you, Mr. Hardy. Back to Chief Ball. Okay, and I will add this. The equipment allows us to disperse some of these responsibilities through the department as well. We've talked previously about our desire to have neighborhood response officers who are not subject to calls for regular calls for service, and their work is dedicated to problems that occur in our neighborhoods. We want to get some of this technology into hands of not just our traffic-oriented or traffic-specific officers. Uh, we also have sent uh, officers from our patrol subdivision recently for the training that would allow them to use this technology so that when they're not on calls for service, they too can be a, a traffic enforcement com component within the department. So I didn't make the reference to staffing as an excuse. Um, this equipment will allow us to spread that burden amongst, the sh uh, amongst members of the department and allow us to do a better job with the people that we have right now. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Council members, committee members first. Uh, any questions or comments? Councilwoman Keith. Well, first, um, Chief, I want to thank you so much for your time last week. Um, and it was a lot of time that you were able to give us to discuss this. Um, these are replacements for what we already have. Um, I don't. I'm not sure how I go back to my residence and say things are going to change. How, how is it any, I know, you know, Lieutenant Decatur, I could be your best cheerleader because I really, you take every single call I give you, every single email on a street or whatever, but, um, uh, and, I, and I'm glad that we're working together. I just have, I, I'm not sure what I go back to my residence and say, these are replacements. Um, I, I thought that possibly if uh, through my residents who call me, maybe they should be calling 311 so it's more documented. Maybe they shouldn't be calling me, you know. But when they call me and I turn it in, I, I'm not sure when a car goes out there. I, I, I know that the list gets longer and longer. Uh, I don't know how long um, uh, a car is able to be out there before they're on another call. Um, and, and 
the big thing is, is probably our staffing from going from 70 down to 20 that is designated traffic enforcement, that that, that has to be a huge hit. I, um, I, I'm not against this. I'm in no way, shape, or form am, am I against this because it's replacement and obviously it's needed and I trust you. But I'm saying, <laughs> You know, what am I supposed to tell my residents that say speeding is still happening? It, what will be different? What will be different uh, by putting these in? Can we say that because of the technology, we're going to be more efficient with it? We're going to be able to get to more streets? Um, and and I, know, I know when I call you or email you, you put it down on there. Is it better that I tell them to call 31 truly? so that we have better documentation that it's not just me um, sitting here telling you this is the road conditions and speeding are 75 percent of my calls that i get so um, i i want you to have what you need i and i i believe it's necessary i want my residents to have what they need also okay well i think the conversation should certainly start with if we don't at least replace the equipment that we have that's outdated and is unusable the condition is going to get worse so if we don't maintain what we have it certainly can't improve at all and i know that sometimes that doesn't satisfy people i also know that um, that perception is is what people's reality is the the fact of the matter is when we've put our trailers out and i know that this is consistent with other chiefs i talked to a couple of the chiefs last week at our Summit County Chiefs meeting, that the, the complaints are similar in other jurisdictions as well, but the reality of it is when the trailers are out there and they're documenting the information that's, or the, the information that's coming back in, that the speeds are not nearly what people are reporting it to be and their perception is different in that when we get that collection of information back, the complaints, and you'll hear them, and they will be, they will be consistent and, and dramatic and, uh, people will say that it's a it's like a, a racetrack out here and the fact of the matter is when we have our uh, trailers out there that record all that information the average speed limit is 30 38 miles an hour in a 35 mile per hour zone so there's not this significant problem that's, that exists and i'm not trying to minimize that at all and i know for example that ridgewood road right now all the signs are up and i think that that's having that grassroots effort is probably having an impact but when we are going out there to do the studies and to get that information back, and Lieutenant Decatur is more familiar than I am with that, that we're not seeing that same kind of thing. It doesn't mean that we don't prioritize it or that we're not out, but you know, sometimes there are answers that the residents don't want to hear that is what's really happening, but they're not going to be satisfied with it. They're still going to be upset. Okay. But we got to replace the equipment. I, I agree with the replacement. There's no doubt about it. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions or comments, committee members? Council members, uh, Councilman Freeman. Years ago, we, we effectively uh, placed automated speed enforcement in our school zones. And the commitment was with the funds that came in from those, I believe, $100 fines, we would place safety signalization at all the schools, which we did. That money did not go into the general budget. That was a successful program, at least in uh, some of our main feeders into our neighborhoods. And I was not here two weeks ago. Was it discussed in the committee or has it been discussed in the administration to perhaps expand that program into some of our main feeders into our neighborhoods and moving beyond just the school zones? I can speak to that. Okay. Um, yes, it's something that we have uh, looked at. However, there is House Bill 410, which has passed the House and it's on its way to the Senate. The Senate will take it up in the lame duck session this fall, is our understanding, which is the state legislature's second attempt at essentially penalizing or outlawing photo and speed enforcement. They failed the first time because we fought, and Akron was at the head of that uh, charge to get that declared unconstitutional, the outright ban. But um, they have come back with essentially a local government fund penalty um, offsetting um, any revenue that might be generated by photo enforcement. The other thing it does is that um, right now there are civil penalties that go through a, a, a process outside of the municipal court system. 
that law would require all of those to go through the municipal court so we we saw norton for example has issued over three thousand tickets in sixty days using their technology every single one of those of the law was in effect would need to go through the barber new municipal court that's totally different thing and so some things though might be worth and that's what council and administration would have to decide together some things public safety enough that you're worth to take the hit one of the things that the mayor has been focused on working with the majority in columbus is to get a school zone exemption into the legislation we feel that that is very possible um, as you noted, Councilman, all of the revenue that comes in from our school zone cameras goes into school safety. Uh, that was an idea that the legislature liked very much, especially given our current state of affairs uh, with school safety. So we're making some headway. So safe to say that, um, again, we are open to keeping the dialogue going on that, but the mayor wants to make sure that that piece of legislation is finalized so that we know what we're dealing with. Um, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't challenge that piece of legislation depending on how it it pans out but we want to kind of take a little bit of a wait and see approach until the end of the year our understanding is that the final piece of legislation would be going before this governor uh, by the end of the year it would not roll over into the new um, the new governor and the new legislature so it shouldn't be too long before we know what we're dealing with thank you James thank you councilman Councilman Kilby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief Ball, when did we have 72 traffic control officers? When, how long ago was that, would you say? 70s? Oh, that's a long time ago. Anyways, uh, what did we have like 10 years ago? you have any idea? Uh, no, not off the top of my, yeah. top of my head. We yeah. currently have uh, 20, you said? Approximately 20. Yeah. Well, that seems to be the problem right there. Like, that's what I would tell my constituents, that uh, we only have 20 traffic control officers to enforce the speed. And if it's that important uh, and enough people out there think it's that important, maybe this council ought to do something about that somehow in the budget. And I'm, I'm not sure if we can earmark how the police spend their money or allocate their money but I just think we need more traffic control officers. Thank you, Councilman. Any other questions or comments? Uh, the committee two weeks ago took uh, time on this item. Uh, what would we like to do moving forward? Second. Motion for consent. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I will place this on the consent agenda. James, thank you very much. I appreciate your work with us. And then Chief and Lieutenant, thank you for coming down. With that, we're adjourned. Parker Recreation will start in one minute. Parker Recreation will start in one minute.
No, we're shit. Yeah, okay. We're all set. Miss Sims? Miss Sims? Mr. Keith. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Park and Recreation Committee meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. If I could please get approval of our last meeting's minutes, which were on September 24th, 2018. Motion to approve. The motion is second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, two pieces before us today. The first one is an ordinance authorizing the mayor or his designee to apply for and accept, if awarded, grant funds from the Northern Ohio Golf Charities Foundation for repairs and additions to facility, uh, facilities at Hardesty Park and declaring an emergency. And here to Ms. Blinn, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm somewhat uh, replacing Brittany Schmokel, our uh, Parks uh, Bureau Manager, who is not able to make it this afternoon. So I'm going to kind of give you a quick summary of the grant funding, and then uh, myself as well as John Valley can then answer any questions that you might have. Um, so this is the 2018 Northern Ohio Golf Charities Foundation grant. Um, this uh, the Northern Ohio. Foundation, I'm sorry, Northern Ohio Golf Charities Foundation is one of our only local foundations that will actually fund um, government entities. They've funded our police department and fire department in the past, and this year Parks and Recreation um, went ahead and applied for approximately $10,000. The funding will be used um, to upgrade the uh, pavilion and restroom facilities at Hardesty Park, which is our most utilized park within the city of Akron. Um, there are no matching funds. Again, if we are awarded the full grant, um, the city will not be obligated to come up with any additional funding, although I believe um, we will have supplemental funding that was actually in the uh, capital improvements budget for 2020 that will be utilized to um, fund the entire project. Okay. Did you say the, the dollar amount is $10,000? It is $10,000. No matching funds required for the grant. And then you said, will that cover the entire cost, or is there? No, that's about a third of the cost. Um, the full amount is 32724 of which the request um, that would come out of the city's pocket is currently in our capital improvements budget. Okay. Uh, any questions for members of the committee? Ms. Sims? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the, is it in the current capital improvement budget, or is it proposed to 2020? Twenty nineteen, I believe. So it would start Jan so as of January first. It would be in the, the budget for improvements within the city's capital, the Parks and Rec capital improvement budget. It's going to be proposed for the twenty nineteen capital budget. I'm sorry, yes. So it hasn't been allocated yet. But if should we win the award, we would then put it into the twenty nineteen capital budget for council's consideration. 
Thank you. Any other questions from members of committee? Members of council? Mr. Mobian? Just curious, these particular dollars will be used for very specific things, the 10,000? The, the monies will be used. First of all, this is a, a grant yeah, that we're hoping to be successful for. Mm -hmm. But if we are successful, we want to repair uh, the stalls in the restrooms, drinking fountains, hand dryers, toilet paper holders, lighting, et cetera. Uh, out of all our community center parks and pavilions, Hardesty Park is the most utilized. Yeah. And we estimate that there's 100,000 participants and visitors. Uh, right. I read all of that. Yes. But those items that identified would add up to about $10,000. Is that what no, you think? No. The you items that uh, I identified would be a total of 32000 Oh, all of those items. And so we'll present that in, in the 2019 right. capital right. budget for the remainder. So, okay. But the 10000 would just be thrown in there, whatever Correct. you can do with that. If we're successful. Yes. Yeah. Ah. I understand. Thank you. Ms. Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we're going to go ahead and put the, th the, the other portion in the capital budget. If we don't get the 10000 it'll just be less the amount we can, we can do the improvements with. Because we're, is that the intent? In the process of, of putting the capital budget together, but yeah, that would be our intent is that we are contemplating as of today putting the full amount into the capital budget we feel, you know, we've been very successful with Northern Ohio Golf Charities in the past. Ironically, they, they helped through a grant years ago to construct the pavilion at Hardesty Park, so we feel there's a connection there. Um, but either way, yes, we're contemplating as of today putting it into the capital budget. So I'm just, just a point of clarity, Mr. Hardy. So we're, we're going to put the whole 32000 in the capital budget. And yes. If we get the 10000 then, that, then it would be reduced, by, take the that reduced by 10,000, yes. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Sims. Any other questions? What's your pleasure? Consent's fine. Okay. The motion is second for consent. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have another piece to come before us. We have an ordinance authorizing the mayor or his designee to enter into contracts after publicly advertising for bids for redesign, repair, update, addition, and or improvements of grounds, equipment, and facilities fixtures at certain city of Akron parks in keeping with Akron Parks Challenge and declaring an emergency. And with us to share, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I have with me Bridget M. Briscoe, who, as you know, and you've, uh, many of you have spoken with, is head of uh, both Friends of the Metro Parks and the Akron Parks Collaborative and is our partner on the Akron Parks Challenge. I, uh, I am happy to report, and Bridget's here to answer any specific questions you may have about our process, but we have been, and I think we is better spent as Bridget and Jim, Ashley, have been incredibly uh, diligent over the last summer, uh, several months, engaging with the three uh, successful parks, Cadillac Triangle Park and Ward 4, Reservoir Park and Ward 10 and Chestnut Ridge Park and Ward 9 to really co-design improvements up to $100,000 for each park. I'm happy to report that uh, that process has been wildly successful. In fact, I think, and Councilman Freeman can correct me, but someone at least said it was the largest uh, gathering for a national night out that Kenmore's seen in quite some time for the Parks Challenge uh, prototyping. So we had an incredible amount of output from all, uh, all three parks. Uh, what you have before you, uh, well, first of all, I'm happy to report that in all of these cases, we're ready to spend some dollars. So the, the community has identified their top projects. Uh, Cadillac Triangle, we just did, weather permitting, we had to push it back twice. We just did their prototyping event, which was very successful. I know Councilman Neal was there. Uh, others stopped by, we got a ton of data and we're working with Rick to finalize that, but 
their number one was really to create a con contemplative adult oriented park. So that's gonna take a little bit more design. But in terms of Reservoir Park and Chestnut Ridge, we're ready to go with the initial set of improvements uh, that are community picked. So this was very much a participatory budgeting process if you think about it that way. And so the legislation you have before you uh, simply authorizes us to spend what is already, you already approved in the capital budget. So in the capital budget, the parks challenge is identified for um, 275, 250, 75, and then we got a $25,000 grant from the Knight Foundation to bring it up to 300,000. So uh, again, what you have before you is just to allow us to go ahead and make those improvements, not to exceed 100,000, which is in keeping with what this council approved in the capital budget earlier this year. And Bridget, I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, I, I, I would just add what you'd said, the, the uh, night out that was held at Chestnut Ridge Park, uh, Kenmore Creative Group that's over there, they did pass out surveys amongst, you know, there was a lot of folks there. And so a lot of the things that have happened here were a result of, you said, hey, you know, we've won this award. How would you like to, what would you like to see your park look like? So that's how they came up with this. And then also, I don't want to miss this opportunity, the same group that worked on the grant uh, was out in, I didn't get to be there, but they were out in full force Saturday at the park and did a bang up job for a cleanup in anticipation of, of what they've been awarded here through this program. So we are actually, uh, um, for Chestnut Ridge, we're, we're working right now, uh, what this legislation would authorize is their number one was to electrify and light the beautiful WPA amphitheater there. Uh, we also have a, um, uh, uh, we're working with game time uh, playground systems. Uh, they are interested in partnering with us to deliver um, essentially a deep discount for them to get a new playground at Chestnut Ridge. So we're, we're already in process with them. Reservoir Park, their number one, correct me Bridget, was a walking trail that they themselves identified what the path was going to be. Our engineers walked it, they tested it. We're gonna build it before winter hits so we can keep the momentum going. They also are looking at um, some plaza improvements and they have a tiny tot uh, playground that has seen way better days and so they really want the tiny tot playground to be replaced with something that is eligible for both the little ones all the way through the adolescents to play on. So, um, and again, Cadillac Triangle has collected a ton of data um, and Bridget can answer questions, but, or Councilman Neal, but I'm really excited about that project because it's very different from the other two. Um, the feedback there really was about creating again a contemplative peaceful place for more of an adult crowd versus a, a children's park. And so that's a different, that's a different design uh, flavor that, that, uh, that we need to take there. And so I'm excited to, to state that we're working both internally, but also with the Cleveland Urban Design Collaborative through Kent State to see if they can come in and help us uh, pro bono, if you will, to put, give life to a design that we can then uh, take through the community. But, and Councilman Neal, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that process. No, I, I just want to um, share my appreciation to the Bridget administration, but especially to Bridget and her team, to uh, Rick Buchanan and the folks in, in his group. I mean, that's, to me, that, that, that epitomizes collaboration between government and the community, working with them to, you know, come up with ideas and then, um, you know, make them come to fruition. So I, I, I just want to say thank you. And hopefully as we go along, because uh, as we know, we, we've got some, a lot of catching up to do in our parks. We can engage um, all those who, who have a vested interest from our young people. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad the Cadillac, because a lot of times when we talk about park and recreation, we're talk, we, we forget those who are more seasoned cross-generationally that we can keep all these folks in mind as we look at our parks because you know some of the discussion again came up with some things that we wouldn't you normally think about for for parks and there's some creative innovative ways that we can maybe do some things in the future so I just want to say thank you because it, it was an education for me um, and one that I, I was really happy to see that you know we engaged all, all the residents so thank you um, Ms. Sims Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a similar experience recently. We were at Leadership Akron 
and just a full explanation of all of what transpired. But here's a question uh, for you, uh, Mr. Hardy, possibly. Sure. On the, the 600, the, the item seven on the consent agenda, mm -hmm. is that just to, for the lighting at Chestnut Ridge, or are we looking to do the challenge all over again in 2019? So it's, we are gonna do it all over again in 2019, but again, that will come back to this council as part of the 2019 capital budget. Capital budget. So the, the half of the 600 in GO is to support and fully implement this year's program. We were very clear with the parks winners from, from actually even before the selections were made that it would most likely not be fully implemented until the spring of 2019, just because we'd never done it before and we didn't know how long the engagement would take. I'm happy that we've come so far so quickly, but for example, we our goal is to have all the improvements to have spent that 100,000 per park by June 1st of next year, but our intent is to come back to this council with another request for an allocation of, th of of uh, 300,000, we're gonna try and get some grant dollars as we did this year to offset that ca that capital cost, but yes. So, so we're, in, we're, in, we're in, we intend to solicit partnerships again. Yes, we okay. intend, and we had close to 70 applications all over the city, and the good news is we didn't let a single one rot on the vine. We have actually, Bridget and Dan Rice at the Ohio and Erie Canal Way held a workshop for all those that did not uh, were not successful this year, and Bridget has been reaching out to all of them to start up friends groups, get prepared for next year, and there are a lot of things we can do through miscellaneous parks and other things that we didn't know that people wanted done. So we actually got a lot of ideas even outside of the parks winners, and we've been working through service, through planning, through Bridget, um, to implement what we can, and we did a lot through this summer. So that's a long way of saying yes, we hope council will continue to support the program, and our goal is to have this 300,000 spent by June 1st because that's when we want to hit, put out the next call for applications. Yeah, I, get, I think the thing that excites me the most, I think we all talk about the little or no funding in park and recreations uh, to understand fully how, could, how, how parks create these connectivities in our community that uh, really scores like leaps and bounds uh, for the amount of money that we invested in. So I'm, I'm glad to know that we'll uh, be seeking to do um, some additional parks next year. Thank you. Wish your pleasure. Consent would be fine. Motion for consent. There's been motion and second for consent. Any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. That's all. way ahead. <laughs> that was parks, right? Yeah. It's actually, yeah. It's health and social services. It's, uh, Mr. Kilby, it's health and social services. First. All the members of the Health and Social Service Committee are present. Mrs. Sims has stepped out, but she'll be back, I'm sure. May I have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Second. The minutes have been accepted and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they've been approved. We have one issue before us today, 
is a resolution approving and confirming the reappointments of Jim Purge, Dr. Harvey Stearns, Stearns and Susan Sigmund to the Senior Citizens Commission and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. Uh, this resolution, again, simply reconfirms uh, these three individuals for a full term on the Senior Citizens Commission. We staggered them when we reconstituted the commission last year, if you recall. So these folks were on a one-year term just to provide for a staggering. Uh, all three ha perform incredibly well. This commission and John Valley will, and so will Annie, uh, Verify have been incredibly active, and we expect big things from them next year as well as we partner um, together. So um, Harvey Stearns, for example, is the chair of the Senior Citizens Commission. Um, Jim Purge is a North Hill resident, and Susan Sigmund, I believe, is from Direction Home. So um, we ask for your consideration and re reappointment. Thank you very much. My only concern is that I think they meet at the same time we meet downtown because I've tried to get to a couple of their meetings but I've not been able to make it but uh, certainly are there any questions by the committee members I attended their meeting today and I did bring that point up too I, I, okay. I stated that you know noon on Mondays are very very difficult for me even to get there because their meetings are for from noon until two o'clock and I also mentioned council members too. board of control meets 1130 committee meetings the mayor, administration cabinet members are all tied up also with council. So they did mention that they are kind of looking at that. Good. And there may be a change. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Are there any other questions or comments uh, from other committee members? Hearing none, any questions or comments from council members? Seeing none, may I have a motion to accept the reappointments and declare an emergency? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is this for the consent agenda or suspension of the rule? I think I said declaring an emergency. It's a suspension. Suspension rule. Thank you. Okay. It's been moved, seconded, and voted on. It's been approved. Thank you very much. Uh, there is no other action to come before the committee. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Economic development, one minute, please. That's you. Sorry about that.
We're going to begin economic development. Can I get approval for minutes from the July 23rd economic development meeting? Second. All in favor? Aye. We just have one piece before us. Uh, authorizing the mayor or his designee to accept $250,000 in grant funds through the Summit County Transportation Improvement District awarded by the Ohio Department of Transportation Office of Job and Commerce for the improvements of the Firestone Business Park and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Brad. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, this is a grant that the city has received towards the improvement for Firestone Business Park, which essentially is an extension of Cole Avenue to the west and then to the south. Um, it is a new business park which is being built on the acreage that the city received from the Firestone property when we did the uh, expansion for the Firestone Tech Center. And it's going to be able to uh, open up 14 acres of property in the back there. And we already have one of the parcels which is sold. It's going to go to the Summit County, uh, DOES, Department of Environmental Services. And just as a uh, FYI, they are bringing approximately a $3 million additional payroll to the facility. And those are people who are coming to the city of Akron. So we will be getting that additional income tax on top of it. This grant specifically is going towards just the roadway work. And the roadway in particular is about $4.2 million total budget. And it is in the budget this year. The, the work is going to start in about two weeks or so. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the members of the committee? Any questions from members of council? Just somebody just tell us a little bit more about Can you just sort of define the, for, the Firestone Park business park improvement? Just sort of. What this is, is it's a, it's a roadway which is going to be, which is going to have a cul-de-sac and what it does is it opens up parcels of property similar to uh, Ascot Industrial Park, similar to Maslin Road Industrial Park, except these are going to be really for mostly manufacturing projects, manufacturing companies to come in to build factories, to build warehouses, to bring these jobs into Akron. And we have approximately, as I said, 14 acres which are able to be developed back there. I'm glad to hear the J word. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions from members of the committee? Any other questions from members of council? What's your pleasure? Uh, consent would be fine. Can I get a motion for consent? Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain. You're abstaining, Mr. Kamer? Yeah. Abstain. Thank you. There's nothing else to come before our committee, Economic Development Committee. We are now adjourned. Budget and Finance will meet in one minute. Good. You're last. Whatever you met last, that's what you have for a minute. Come on out of there. May 2018. May.
Call the committee meeting to order. For the record, all members are present. I have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Motion to second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Thank you. We have uh, one item uh, before us here, and uh, this is an ordinance amending ordinance number 82 2018, passed March 19th, 2018, which established the annual appropriation for the current expenses other expenditures and the capital outlays of the city of Akron for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2018 and declaring an emergency, Mr. Fricker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is uh, an ordinance amending our original budget. Uh, this is the first amendment of the year. Uh, so the structure of the ordinance is that there is one section per each fund uh, that is appropriated. Uh, Cindy Donnell, our audit and budget manager, just passed out a memo that highlights the changes in each fund, and she will go through and, and just provide a brief summary of the changes that we are making. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Donnell? Yeah. Um, overall, it is an increase to the budget. I tried to highlight for you in the letter that will show you what categories. Um, in addition to that, I do want to point out that 3.3 million of the increase are grant funds. So you heard earlier applying for grants. We don't budget the grants till they're awarded. So some of the increases are to cover some of the grant items. Thank you. Um, so in the general fund, there are two smaller grant amounts that are rolling through there. So the increase in municipal court judges, as well as public health other, are for grant items. Um, community, de community development fund in section four grant related, as well as section five, the police grant funds. Um, we have numerous grants that run through other funds, including the section seven within our equipment facilities operating fund. We have some sections of the ordinance where we are simply just moving budget um, from one category to another in section 11 in our public parking fund. We are asking to move $100,000 from outlay to other, so it's not a net increase, it's just shifting to the, a different category. Um, same, similar situation in section 16 with our telephone system. Um, we're asking to m reduce the budget in other and add it to outlay to cover um, a vehicle purchase was a little bit higher than we anticipated, so we're just shifting budget for the right account type. You can read it in detail. I'd be more than happy to sure. explain. I, I think, I mean, it, it's my hopes that we can, we can take a week and let all of us digest this and then throughout the week come back to you, yeah, Mr. Yeah, if Fricker, there's any questions, you. feel free to, to right. uh, email me and uh, we'll get back to you. I mean, if, if that's agreeable with the committee, I'd first entertain any questions or comments from the committee, but I think that is the way we'll want to proceed. Questions or comments? Oh, yes, um, Mr. Kilby. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, uh, it's not about this particular legislation, but I would like to take the opportunity to ask some people from finance and treasury a question or two. Uh, I read the article in the Beacon Journal about our financial situation, and I just, don't really understand exactly what it says. Can can you guys kind of update council on uh, what what the auditor said we were doing wrong or not doing enough of? I mean, the auditors always have suggestions for our financial statements. They have comments on how we record things and ways we can improve. Um, I don't have the report in front of me, but. Um, was there something in Yeah, particular? there was actually, uh, what was the terminology? The word distress, financial uh, distress. Is that what they said? The seven cities in the they state? They actually looked at just different indicators, and depending on where you fail, that was what he came up with. Okay, so what exactly does that mean? 
in uh, just regular layman's terms that they were looking at our 2017 I mean that's part of the reason we asked for an income tax increase okay so and we'll see that reflect in 18 okay so what is it is that the correct terminology of financial distress is that what they said that's what was okay so there's only like seven was it seven cities we mentioned I think it was seven cities but again yeah. I think there are 16 categories that they actually rate the different cities and counties in. Let me do that. Let me, let's come back to that, Mr. Kilby. I want to take care of this piece okay. first. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's I fine. I thought you were done. No, no, no. I just, well, I want to get, Go uh, ahead. I, I mean, get I direction guess, on, on this we one. Come back do we that. have a, a motion to uh, take a week's time on this? Motion. A second. And all in favor? There was another question, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, well, I have a question during the speech I've had. It has to be voted Okay. All right, so we did, we took a vote, all in favor, aye? Aye. All right, thank you, okay. N the newspaper article mentioned a couple things that we weren't doing right. What were those things? See, I don't know without looking at the article, I apologize. Okay. The items that they did, fine. Again, it was to help us just perform better, but before they left, we corrected their concerns. Okay, but, um, what are we doing to get out of financial distress, I guess? I think the first step that we took was we went to the voters and asked them for a quarter percent income tax increase. Okay. I think uh, when Mayor Horgan came into office, he had a blue ribbon panel review our financials. Yeah. And again, it was noted that uh, we have lost money from the state to the $215 million a year. I understand that. So when did the uh, quarter percent uh, inc income tax increase uh, kick in? When did we start collecting? We started collecting that in January of 18. Okay, all right. So the numbers that he saw were prior to the income tax increase. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Neal. Um, my question in regards to this piece of legislation here is I appreciate the, the codes that show us where the money is. Earlier I had asked a few months back if we could have this um, kind of information all the way through the life cycle of finances during a budget period. Because many times what happens is if the money's not expensed, it goes back into the general fund and then it may come back to us to be reappropriated in some other kind of way, but we have no way of knowing where it initially started because it just it says it comes back from the general fund. Um, and I was asked to rewrite my request, but I think it's appropriate for me to ask it since we're getting this, and that is, if any dollars that are allocated to a certain fund are not spent and they go back to the general fund, shouldn't this code of where the money was initially allocated to follow it so that when it comes back to us out of the general fund, we can have a true understanding of where it came from. I mean, over the years, I, I think of, you know, we ask questions about, um, we don't get that information anymore, but I understand why money was allocated this way, but we would fund a certain department or position so that you wouldn't have to come back to us throughout the year. And then if it wasn't utilized, we'd ask what would happen and it was hard to follow. I can remember, uh, I think Councilman Hoke had a question about a, an apron for some years that, uh, for, at a fire station that was never used. And you know, well, when that money went back into the general fund, and it was used for something else, but it was hard to tell so that, um, exactly where it came from for, for us. So from our standpoint as ones who set a budget and try to see how that budget, you know, how um, accurate we're, we were with that budget, it's hard to, to tell at the end of the year when everything that's not um, expensed as originally budgeted goes back to the general fund and then comes back to us to be spent on something else. So my question is this, with this piece here, is there anything so that we would know when we set our budget and everything has its code, that if it's not expensed and it goes back into the general fund, when it comes back to us, we can say we're expensing $100,000 and we see the original dollar appropriation where that came from. I guess just looking at the ordinance before us, section two general fund, 
it's showing everything that was changed and what and where it went. So I guess I'm, I don't know what you're asking for. Okay. And this then is, again, our budget is more than general fund. I understand that. This is what I'm asking for. When you don't expense something and you put it in the general fund, or if a car is wrecked in the police department and you put it in the general fund, that money would have a code associated with it. So that when it comes back before council to be expensed some other kind of way, we know where that money came from. Because it didn't get its origin from the general fund. That money came from someplace else and then went back to the general fund. Um, no. Can, was, can, I, can I clarify? Okay, so each of the sections talk about a different fund. So section three is our special assessment fund. Okay. So fund 2010. Okay. This budget is solely for 2010. Any funds not utilized in that fund do not go back to the general fund. Hmm. That fund is a standalone fund. Okay, so please correct me then, because at the beginning of the year, we have the police department, everybody come to us with their budget. It was told to us that if a police car, car is wrecked, we all just generally assumed that the money would stay within the police department. We were told that money goes back to the general fund. It's not left with the police department. But the police but department is general fund. So I guess but, I'm okay, lost. Okay, well then maybe I'm not asking my question right. Here's where I'm asking my question. When we set the budget, we set a budget for the police department. There's money associated for certain expenses within the police department. When you just put it back into the general fund and it comes back before us, it's hard for us to determine, okay, so we, we associated that. I'm just choosing a number. We, we put $2 million in the police department's budget you know, um, I, maybe I'm wrong. It just makes sense if a police car is wrecked and we get insurance money for it, or if somebody yeah. runs into a fire hydrant, we get insurance money for it. We, we have been doing that. We have been appropriating. So this year we appropriated $75,000 for insurance proceeds that come in for damaged police vehicles to be uh, allocated towards buying replacement vehicles so it, and actually I believe we just bought three cruisers out of the general fund uh, with those it, those insurance proceeds so you say it's more clearly identified yes and we started that, that particular uh, item is yes is yes. that something so, we've always been doing or are you saying we just now that's something it? we've done for the last two years I think okay so we started doing it well just based on my question I don't know if my colleagues follow me uh, what, what I'm would like to know is if, if something that if you're saying is already in the general fund um, and maybe I need a better understanding of general fund because I thought when well, we go through the budget cycle and everybody comes with their separate department and speaks to us and the money is allocated that way where it gets lost is if we don't expense it it goes back to the general fund and it, and only it only unexpended gen funds originally appropriated within the general fund go back to the general fund okay. so as as Cindy mentioned, if it's within another fund and those funds are unexpended, they do not revert to the general fund. They stay within okay, the fund that, that, that they were appropriated in. Okay, I understand that, but did, didn't someone just tell me that the police department is part of the general fund? It is. Amongst, I mean, there are several departments that have operations in various funds. So the police department has, I'm going to guess, 15 or 20 different funds that it operates within. So it has the general fund, which funds the bulk of its operations, the bulk of its officers, but then it has a number of grant funds, it has the child safety fund. Uh, so there are a number of different operations within police that have different fund right. okay, funds. That, so the part I'm asking about are those groups that come before us with their individual budgets that I guess come from the general fund. Since they come to us with an individual budget, with dollars that are allocated for their specific budget, if that is not expensed, when it goes back to the general fund, what I'm asking is, it should be coded in such a way that we understand uh, where those dollars came from throughout the life cycle of that. Because at the end of the year, I, I understand it all goes back to the general fund, but a lot of times this stuff cycles back to us throughout the course of the year where those dollars are reallocated to something else. And from a budget standpoint, that right there is is, is difficult. So that's my, that's my one question. Just asking for the code to follow the dollars all the way through the cycle of that budget year. Um, and my other one falls in line with um, Mr. Kilby's, and that is, and we kind of got an answer, but it, it referenced 
it being a an accounting way things were done accounting, but the reality of it is it was still a nine million dollar shortfall. And when the, the um, answer we got was it was related to um, payroll. Um, not a, you know that nine million dollars was related to a payroll. Where do we stand on since we don't have cell towers to um, make up that expense this year? Are we on track? Are we are we behind? Um, are we running that same type of deficit? Where do we stand? Our general fund, we anticipate coming in with a balanced revenue and expenditure such that fund balance maintains the same level. So we, we won't have to spend down our, our any That of our is reserves. the goal. That is the goal. So I understand you're saying that is the goal, but so right now, our, the way our dollars hit, we, we're not in jeopardy of having to spend down any of our reserves this year. From what we're looking at right now, that is the case, correct. And then just the last thing, and this is the council as a whole, that article that came out um, over the weekend and some of the discussions that we've had, even having members from different uh, council members coming down and asking about the budget, we passed legislation to put our budget online. Uh, we're getting ready to go into a, 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 a new budget cycle. Um, it is my hope that uh, there's no reason uh, if we need to go into committee as a whole this afternoon so that we can know exactly where we stand on that, when we'll have that tool, not just for our constituents, but mainly for us, so that we can have a full grasp and understanding of our city's finances. Uh, we should not have to read the paper to find out information when it comes to our city, city's budget, since that's our main responsibility as council. So, um, that's more so for council than, than for here. Yeah, it's something that we need to move on. So thank you. Mr. Donnell, thank you for, I know, thank you. You pretty much see, oversee the appropriation. Thank you for that. And, uh, okay, Mr. Kilby. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, we had a discussion in safety committee this afternoon uh, about speeding in the city and uh, the chief said that uh, I think in the 70s this city had 72 traffic control officers now we have 20 now everybody around this horseshoe knows that that's your number one complaint from our constituents now I guess my question is this like when we do our budget the city council does the budget can we I, and I don't want to micromanage the police department but can we earmark certain amounts of their money and say we want more, more uh, officers in the uh, traffic division? Are we, can we do that is my question. I think it's something we need to discuss with police. Okay, well what about the council? <laughs> where, where do we come in on that discussion? It's a discussion we need to have with police. With, what about the council? Do we? have a say in uh, that discussion? I, my understanding is we, those are administrative decisions. Obviously, we have the power to pass or to say no to a budget, but uh, when, it com when it comes to speaking into a department's budget and saying, oh, no, I want you to do it this way, I really think that's outside of our council program. has the authority I, to I believe we have the power to do that if we want to exercise it. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, council has the, the authority to appropriate funds within a department and a budget and a de a department a fund and then the categories within those funds so labor other or capital outlay so, so what, what's that doesn't get down to staffing do particular uh, divisions within the police department or the fire department or right. whatever it may be okay what's your answer mr. Fricker can we or can we not when we do the budget put something in there that says we want the police department to have so many traffic control, yes or no? I Not within the okay. appropriation ordinance, no. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. Not within the appropriation ordinance, but I just think we as a council should take a more active part in this discussion about what we want. 
we represent the people. We're the closest elected officials to the people. <laughs> and I think we're kind of like not involved in the discussion. I mean, we come down here and we talk to each other and uh, mostly what we do is what you guys tell us to do, if you want to know the truth. And uh, <laughs> I just think this council needs to take a more assertive uh, role and it comes from leadership. I'm just one councilman. That's what I believe. That's what I've always believed. Okay, we've definitely moved beyond our ordinance here, but uh, Mr. Neal? No, sir, th this kind of like um, relates to an earlier discussion about the um, dog ordinance. Again, council, as, as Mr. Fricker shared, um, we don't get into the administrative side. We just set the ordinances. But to what Mr. Fricker said, if I understand, if council wants to see more in that patrol area, where we do it is on the budget side by directing funding in the budget category. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. I mean, because we can't get over into any, any administrative side. We make sure we, we would direct more funding so that they would have the resources to hopefully do. We can't make them do. Like, there's several pieces of legislation that we've passed that if the administration chooses not to act on it, it doesn't get acted on. But from the budgetary side, we would provide more funding so that could happen. Any other questions or comments? All right. That we, uh, we, we've already voted on this. Uh, we're going to take time on this. Again, any questions? Mr. Nell, you're out of town. So any questions regarding these appropriations should go to Mr. Fricker. Correct. That's correct. And uh, it's uh, 410. We will adjourn. Thank you. Mr. Kelby, okay, I'll call housing committee uh, to session. Does anybody uh, approve of the minutes from the last council uh, housing committee meeting? Motion to approve. Second? There a second? Thank you. Okay, we have one piece of legislation here. Uh, uh, approving and confirming the reappointment of Michael Doberton. Doberton. Doberton, I'm sorry, to the Housing Appeals Board and declaring an emergency. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Harding. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, this is uh, a piece of legislation reconfirming uh, Mr. Doberton to the Housing Appeals Board. He has served very well. Um, we conferred with uh, Mr. Valley and neighborhood assistants, and they believe that uh, he's earned uh, another term. So we ask for your consideration and-, uh, and So it's a three-year term? Yes, sir. So uh, how long has Mr. Uh, how do you say his Doberton. Name? Doberton. Doberton. How long has he been on the Housing Appeal Board? Just one term? I'm, I'm hearing okay. 15 to 18 uh, years. Yeah, yeah. his name. I never met the man. Um, okay. Uh, let me ask a, a general question. Do these uh, members, do they get any kind of a stipend for meeting or anything like that? I mean. They meet usually once a month. Yeah, it depends. Not every commission and every board gets a stipend. This one does. Okay. It's what typically, is, though, like I think no more than $125 a meeting. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. They should get something. I mean, I yeah. know it's public service, but uh, it's still their time. So they get $125? Uh, um, I yeah, I mean, 125 then they get taxes. Okay. So it's about 100 bucks. Any uh, questions from the committee on this? Okay, Richard.
Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Swartzke. Oh, just that I, I've had opportunity to see Mr. Dovern in, in action in the Housing Appeals Board, and he was excellent um, at bringing the different committee members to the same position and, and also working uh, to encourage compliance uh, without punishment if possible, and I thought that was really of value to our city. Um, and that Mr. Dobberton had a long rock track record. You would have liked, he was a, a union leader uh, for the communication workers in America. Mm -hmm. So he came from a kind of grassroots working class so advocacy and he's applied it well in his work at the appeals board. Any other questions mm -hmm. from uh, committee members? Any uh, questions from council members? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, where does uh, Mr. Dobberton live? What part of town? You know, I don't know. the know. golf course near um, Good Park? I believe he's Ward 4, yeah. Okay. He, oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Have to live in near, Akron. Yes. Kind of near Good Park golf yeah. course, I think. Can't be on it without living in Akron. Yeah. He's not my Lord. <laughs> you know, I like him. I, I, I've heard of him. I've been down there. I, I yeah. don't uh, remember him exactly, but it sounds like he's doing a good job. So uh, with that, uh, on, Do you want us to pass this out or just put out a consent? Consent is fine. Okay, motion, does anybody have a motion for consent? Second? Yeah, second? Second. Okay, so moved. Uh, anything else that we come, come before the committee? Not, we're adjourned. Thank you. Bam! <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I used to.